everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I am going to show you in today's video the Japanese rice bag that I made. I have to thank Corinne for um, doing hers from scratch <laughs> from the get-go and making all of the videos that she did, 11 of them, Bless you, Corinne. I know you don't watch me, but <laughs> bless you. <laughs> um, and she did it using other people's ideas and videos and things that she had seen, um, but making it her own. So I kind of did the same thing. I watched her. I watched the other videos she um, linked to that she said inspired her. And I've also watched um, a lot of Ariane Zercher. I've watched Rachel at Roxy Creations do her stitching. I've watched Susie Q Makes do her stitching. I've watched a lot of people stitching, um, just stitching in general. And I sort of watching Corinne, I got my own ideas of how I thought that it would work for me and I hadn't seen this is very similar to what Corinne did I did a couple of things differently and um I'm very happy with the results I'll just say that so the camera's at a bit of a different angle today and I hope this works um the light is actually sitting on my lap so um, we'll see how this goes, but it was the only way. It's a very dark, dreary day, so um, I am trying to show it in its best light and color, let's say. So I lo used a lot of turquoise and greenish blues and stuff like that, which are my favorite colors besides, you know, purple. <laughs> Purples, teals, blues, yeah. So um, this cloth on the table pretty much represents my favorite colors. So, um, and I hand dyed this cloth myself. Um, so there are four sides. The sides measure seven by seven square. And I just treated them very much like some of the, um, the, what, well, when I was doing journaling, we called them snippet rolls, but I made a bunch, like probably half a dozen or more, that are wall hangings and they hang around the house. So I did it sort of in a method like that, but on a square. And I cut things out, I used threads, I used beading. There's the, the beads. I drew the circles and then stitched over them. I did a lot of patchwork and boro stitching. Um, some of it I left plain. Like, I left that plain. I'm okay with that. This was a leftover heart I had cut out from another project. Um, and this is lace, and I did not sew that down. I did a big cross here. I just did what came to me and what felt good. There's the dragonfly that I did that I showed in one of my previous videos. So um, then it came to the bottom and I thought, if this is gonna get a lot of use, I want to put feet on it, but I didn't want to put hard, clunky, loud feet on it. So what I did was I used four Suffolk puffs. <laughs> Let me straighten it out. And just use those as little feet. They're not really feet. They could have been spread out a little more, but I like where they are. <laughs> if I wanted to add a couple more, I could always stitch those on without going through the fabric inside. Um, so I bought some cording. This cording I found at Joann's on a spool. And then I made it just long enough to tie the ends like that when it stands open. Now this Stands open pretty nicely. Um, you can put the cords on the outside. And I think it stands open pretty well. I used a solid fabric for the inside, which 
you know, had a lot of the colors in it that I wanted, the blues and greens and teals. And the inside I sewed on machine and the seams on the outside I sewed by machine. The rest of it is all hand stitched. This is a loop. The loops, I struggled with whether I should make them smaller. First off, these are kind of tall. Um, and if I can remember where I put my ruler, I will measure them for you. Um, but I may have to put the dimensions in writing when I edit the video. Anywho, <laughs> um, they're a little tall and I could have gone shorter with them, probably by an inch. But everyone that I'd seen was had tall loops on it, no matter what the size of the bag. Um, this method of the fabric that's on the flip side of the loop overhanging the edges came from the video linked by Corinne from Stephen, his last name becomes an H. I will link it in the description box below. I will also link Corinne's first video that she does to show what she is doing since I give her all the credit for me getting this done. Um, and this has um, quilt batting, cotton quilt batting in it. So it's not very thick. It's a little, I mean, you can't really feel it squish. It gives it just enough body that it stands up on its own. And if you put things in it, it'll keep standing up on its own. However, it's also soft enough that when you pull the drawstring, it closes. Now, the other thing I struggled with the loops was whether to put two on each side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Since this is only seven inches, I sort of felt like two, especially the size I made them, which is too big, um, would have been too much. However, when it's drawn closed, it's not really gathering the bag as much as I'd like it to. So on the next one, I'm going to make the loops smaller, shorter in height, smaller in width, and I'm going to put two on each side. And I'm going to see how that goes. This works perfectly fine for me. This is a seven inch square that works perfectly if I want to put my needle book in it, if I want to put my scissors in it, put my, um, I mean, it holds a lot. So, you know, put a pen in it and put any little projects in it and there's still tons of room like i thought seven inches was not going to be big enough as a project bag plenty big even if you're a knitter if you're doing small things like mittens or socks i think a project would fit in there um you can make this any size you want corinne's i believe she did six and a half by six and a half um, I started with an eight inch square and thought, holy cow, I'm never going to be able to fill four eight inch squares with enough stitching and fabrics and fabric collage and lace and more stitching. I, I thought I'll never finish it. So seven inches really is probably as big as I'll ever go. But you can make it taller, you can make it wider, you can make it smaller. And my next one is going to be the same size as this. I thought about making it smaller. I probably should have. And if in the future videos you see a smaller one, that may be what happens. <laughs> However, I've just gotten through, I just finished cutting or tearing a bunch of fabrics and picking out purples. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just do that in these videos, but I, at some point, will make a smaller bag. Probably I'll try five by five. That's what I think I'll do. So that is this project, and 
I'm very pleased with how it came out. I wish that the colors would show up better in this light. I'm going to change the light and see if that does anything. That mm, sort of changes it enough to be where I think it should be. One more change. One more. Yeah. I think that one shows the best colors, to be honest, the richness of the colors in this LED light that I have. So I'm very pleased with it. I made um, Suffolk puffs out of the actual, some of the fabrics that I used in the bag and gathered them here. The other thing is I wouldn't put anything bulky like this at the top. It will, you know, sort of affect the gathering effect of the bag. Um, but didn't think about that when I made it. It doesn't hurt it too much. If there were two tabs up here, I, it might make a difference. So I would put anything like this down at the bottom, plus anything heavy at the top weighs the top of the bag down. Now, you can use whatever you want on the inside. You could make it just with your outside fabric and your inside fabric. That would make it very soft and pliable and floppier. Um, you could make it with a stiff interfacing and make it way stiffer and make it stand up more like a box if you're going to use it for storage in your room like Corinne is using hers. Um, and I did cut out some interfacing. I'm debating on whether to use that or use the quilt batting again. I love stitching with quilt batting. It's just something that I really enjoy. It's the softness of it. It gives the fabric a little, a little bit of a uh, body. And so I think I'm going to go with the quilt batting again. Um, maybe the smaller bag that I make, maybe I won't want it as bulky. Not that this is bulky, but you know what I'm saying. I might not want it to be as, um, have as much body. And I might want the smaller one, like say I wanted to use it just to carry my wallet and keys in to run into a store or something. Um, if I did that, I would want it to close up much tighter and be a little flimsier so that it's, you know, mm. and it also depends on the weight of your interfacing if you're gonna do it that way. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. So I am going to readjust the camera and I'll be right back. Hold that thought, stay with me please. So these are some of the fabrics that I stripped out from yardage that I have downstairs. Um, some of these I have never used. This one I have, you've seen that. But a lot of these I have never used. They are complete yardages that I bought way back when and I have not used for anything else. And I decided recently that I am going to just start using all of my fabric. I just, I need to downsize it and I don't wanna sell it or give it away. So this is, I bought it because it's my favorites. Um, so this is what's going to go into this um, next bag. And I thought I would just share that with you. Not all of it. I mean, let's face it. All I need is little tiny pieces for a seven inch bag, right? Um, but these are bits and bobs that I have. Um, I need to do some fabric dyeing, so that will be happening in the near future. I think there's some purple in this. I thought there was, that's why I took it out. Not really. Okay, that's going in another pile. <laughs> and this, and then this has lots of, this is a flower sack towel. I buy them at Walmart and, or I used to, I don't know if they still have them. And they dye up beautifully. I like the texture in them. So those are the fabrics that I am opting to use. This is the interfacing that I have in the basement um, when I started trying to machine embroider and hated it. So um, it's not an iron-on. It's just a medium weight Pellon number 40. Um, I wrote on the thing on a piece of paper what it was when I bought it, and that's what it says. So that would make a nice, um, nice weight bag to the, and I'm, I don't know, maybe I'll try that in this one. It's a little, a little stiffer than what I'm looking for. I think 
And then these are the um, quilt batting and the muslin squares that I'm using as my base. So I hope the reflection on the table isn't too much. Um, I made my base fabric seven inches. I made my interfacing or batting bat squares, quilt batting squares, six inches. If I want my bag six inches, I'm going to use six inches on the back of whatever I'm using. If you just want to use another piece of fabric, like if you have old pillowcases laying around, old sheets laying around, if you want something more substantial, you have an old towel laying around, as long as you can stitch through it, you can use whatever you want. But I make it an inch less than my base fabric that I'm going to be stitching on. And I'll tell you what, that really worked for me. And the reason it worked was because when I put the, um, when I put, I'm going to put this back on the table because I should have to begin with. <sighs> Sorry, new setups, you know. When I went to sew the seams together, and I thought this was a brilliant solution for me, when I, I knew to only sew to the edge of my fabric. So as I'm laying, I mean, of my quilt batting, when I'm laying pieces on here and I'm sewing them on, what I'm doing is I am only going to sew to the edge of the quilt batting behind. I'm not going to sew to the edge of the fabric here. And I will tell you that that gave me a guide when I sewed these seams together for the for the edges. That gave me a guide of how far in to sew, and it gave me a guide for when I was hand stitching not to stitch beyond that. Now, yes, some of my muslin shows there. It's imperfect. You know, I'm not about perfection. I can always put a little piece of lace or stitch something on there, or just put stitches in there and cover that up. But if you're a better seamstress, see, it happened there too. If you're a better seamstress than I am. <laughs> and the other thing I did, and I will tell you why this happened. The other thing I did was when I started out, my first square, I only put my fabric to where the outline of the batting is, okay? So let's say, you know, you're looking at the muslin, the padding is underneath, but I'll do this so it's easier to see. What I did was, when I was putting pieces on here, like, let's grab these. When I was putting pieces like this on here, okay, I was only going to the edge of the batting with the fabric. Don't do that. Go out here to the edge of this fabric, not the edge of the batting, with the fabric, but only so to the edge of the of the quilt batting. And I might be overkilling this point, but so I would put that on there, but I would only sew to here. I can feel the quilt batting underneath. I would only hand stitch to there, like down this line, down this line, because that's where the quilt batting is. And then I would, you know, overlay all the other fabrics and do that. I didn't do that on the first one. On the first square I did, I only went to the edge of the quilt batting with the fabric. In other words, I did this. And I stopped there. And because when you hand stitch, it pulls the fabric in. Um, it became a little shy on a couple of edges. And my machine stitching is not always that straight or that good either. So that's why there are a couple gaps on that one. I would recommend placing your fabric on the edge, but only hand stitching to the edge of the quilt. Then when you sew it, you're going to be catching the top fabric, but not your hand stitching. That worked so well for me. It made it so less stressful on how to put it together that I can't even tell you it, it came together like that. However, 
I did sew a couple of things backwards. <laughs> so you can make mistakes, uh, not if you think it through. And I kept referring back to Stephen Hillard. That's the man's name, Stephen Hillard or Hilliard or Hillard, Hillard. I don't know how he says it. He's British. So um, that was the man's video that I went by to make the tabs and also some of the stitching. Um, he shows very clearly and quickly how to machine sew the lining. So you're going to need five base fabrics that you're going to be stitching onto. If you want to make your fabric all, um, you know, pieces like this, and you just want to hand stitch over the top of them, and you don't want to do any fabric collage, go for it. If you want to do fabric collage over the top of them, go for it. But whatever you do, just, you know, your base fabric could be this, seven inches square of this. Um, or a plain fabric, or anything you want. It doesn't have to be muslin. It can be a pillowcase. It can be a sheet. It can be whatever you want your base fabric to be, depending on what you're going to stitch over the top of it. So if you're not someone who does this kind of stitching, then your fabric, or this kind of fabric collage kind of stuff, your fabric could be one piece of fabric, whatever color you want, and you can stitch on top of it. You can do whatever you want. I'm just putting that out there. Um, the I wish I had made notes. The other thing, um, because now I've lost my track. Okay, so, and your lining can be any color you want as well. Your lining, you're going to make five squares of fabric for your base fabric, five squares of fabric for your lining, and five of either batting or interfacing or an extra piece of fabric, whatever you want to give it whatever stiffness you want it to have. So um, I did not cut my base fabric, I mean my lining fabric yet. I have not decided what that's going to be. It's going to be one of the purple fabrics you saw because I have lots of it downstairs to choose from. So that's not going to be a problem. Um, yeah. Then you just get started. You take one piece of your base fabric and one piece of whatever you are putting behind that base fabric, whether it is quilt batting or any of the other things I mentioned. I won't, I won't keep repeating myself because that gets old. There. Just, I don't measure, I eyeball it. That is, you know enough space all the way around. Quarter inches don't work for me. Quarter inch seams, I should say, don't work for me. Quarter inches might not work for me either. But anyway, quarter inch seams don't really work for me. Um, it, it never gives me enough fabric to work with to feel like I'm safely sewing it. So I'm leaving, if you were to move this over here, you know, that's about an inch of fabric extra on each side. So you're leaving yourself about a half an inch and it's going to shift. Pin it. You can glue it with a glue stick. I don't like using glue sticks because for me, um, I don't like pushing my needle through it, even if it's a light coating. You can use a spray adhesive that quilters use. Whatever works for you. Do You could put basting stitches in it. Do what works for you. I don't do any of that. I just pin it a couple of times. And I pin it on this side because you're not going to be sewing the pins inside then, which is if you pin it from the other side, it's you cover it up with a piece of fabric, you, you sew it, and all of a sudden you got a pin inside. So, I, you know, that would be something dumb that I would do. Not necessarily anything that any of you would do, just me. So there you go. And I just do that to all five. I try not to have it bunched up. If you need to adjust it, while you're stitching, it's okay. Do that. Work with it, you know? Make it work for you. Yeah. And now, if I stitch over that, it doesn't matter. It's going to come out because it's on the other side. So I am going to start piecing some fabrics together on a piece. 
and I'll be back in a moment. Hold on, I'll be right back. Alrighty, thanks for hanging in there with me. I am back and this is what I decided to put together. I have chosen my threads. I have lots of purplies in my threads now after my previous visit to Artistic Artifacts. It took me a while. I even thought about not doing the, the purples, but I am going to stick with it. So this is going to be my bottom. The bottom is rarely seen. I will stitch on it. I may put, you know, extra fabric on it because it will wear out because you're constantly setting it on the bottom. But this is going to be my solid bottom. This is also the type of option I was talking about that if you just want to do one piece of cloth, then add things on top of it. I went with a patchwork pattern. <sighs> Am I thrilled with it? Not yet. I'm hoping to be. But anyway, um, I sort of went with a the theme of the lavender in the center. So that is one side. And this is another. And of course, I can always, I have these bits on there, but I can add, if I want to add um, Suffolk puffs or, or uh, hex hexes or lace or anything else. This is just going to be what I start with. Um, and then this one and this one. They got a little away from me with too much patchworky stuff, but I'm going with it, like I said, and that's where I'm going to start. <laughs> so these are the four squares, as you can see, oopsies, <laughs> a little piece of extra there. Um, as you can see, I made the fabric go out as far as the base fabric, but I, again, I'm, and I know I've said this a million times already in this video, I'm only going to stitch up until I hit the edge of the batting on the, in fact, I won't even go to the edge. I, I, I come in about this much. So maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch and I will start stitching and I will, um, you know, like I said, add things along the way as I want. But anyway, I've pinned it all down and I will start stitching and that will be in the following videos. I'll do some stitching on camera and just a little chit chat and then I will, um, and I may even make changes along the way. Who knows? This got really patchworky here. Not sure I love it. So we'll see. <laughs> I, I, I have been second thinking this. Um, this is, I actually did these yesterday and started this video yesterday. This is a whole new day. The sun is shining as you can see in the corner here. And um, it's a whole different day. So um, that being said, I am going to end this video. And the next set of videos will be about some stitching and how I'm, you know, going along with these. Not a lot of that probably. As usual, I don't have a whole lot to talk about. And then... Um, I will go ahead and uh, the, the most, the next biggest step will be um, putting it together. <laughs> Sorry, brain fart. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's what that's all about. And if you want to join in with me, I would really appreciate it. Like I said, you can start with any size. I find the seven inch square of fabric with a six inch padding or interfacing whatever you want to use I find the six inch to be a really nice size and you might want to start with that so it's not too overwhelming and you can just sit and stitch on it once you've put your pieces of fabric together if you want to join me I would be thrilled with that and you know even if you wanted to do this with me 
and then send me photographs, I could um, show the photographs of what you've done on a YouTube video if you'd like to do that. So I hope you do join me. If not, just hang out with me and stitch whatever you're stitching. The 100 Day Project is almost done. I've just been making hearts in the background. And the next video that I do where I'm actually stitching a heart, I will um, include those hearts that I've done. So thanks for joining me. As always, I love you all. And I hope that you'll join in with me, have a little fun, or just stitch along with me while I'm making the next videos. Have a great day, everybody. Love you all. Take care. Be kind to yourself and each other. And I'll be back soon.